The newspaper columnist Simon Jenkins has been chairman of the National Trust for the last six years, but his two terms are now over, and he's chosen to mark his departure by doing what he does in his newspaper columns, by attacking someone, in this case the Prime Minister, the Government, the former Planning Minister, Nick Bowles. They've screwed up the countryside, he says. Britain has long been known for its green and pleasant pastures, and back in 2012, David Cameron pledged to protect them. I would no more put that at risk than I would put at risk my own family. I care deeply about our countryside and our environment, and our vision is one where we give communities much more say, much more control. There's been debate over whether the government has met that pledge, centering on planning, and whether it's tilted too far in favour of developers. There have been significant local protests against green belt developments, including one over the building of 700 homes last month near Carterton in Oxfordshire. Yet the overall shape of Britain changes rather slowly. When you fly over the country and peer out of a plane window on a clear day, it never looks as crowded as it feels down below. The reason is that most of us live in crowded bits. That's why they're crowded. And we fail to appreciate how much space there is elsewhere. Statistically, this is how Britain uses its land. The bulk, about two-thirds, or 65%, is used for agriculture, mostly grazing. Then about 13% is covered by forest. And finally, Britain is about 12% urban or developed. Well, over the latest 10 years for which we have data, the amount of land newly taken into development is actually pretty small. But that all predates the coalition. Well, Simon Jenkins is here, as is Daniel Knowles, who's taken an interest in cities, land use and planning as a writer at The Economist. Good evening to you both. Mm -hmm. um, Simon Jenkins, there are people who accuse you of wanting everybody to have to be forced to live in the cities in rather dense areas, while posh people live in the countryside and visit country homes in their cars at the weekend and have that sort of almost to themselves. Now, I know that you won't agree with that accusation being fair, but how do you get out of it? <laughs> You're right, I don't agree with it. I mean, it, people live in cities. The demand for housing is in cities. That's where jobs are, that's where hospitals are, schools are. That's where the infrastructure of, of, of the countries, of, of the land is. And, and the sensible place to, to put new development is in cities, if cities have space. British cities are the lowest densities in Europe. There's plenty of space for development in cities. The countryside in in Britain is a totally different phenomenon. It's, it's, a, it's one of the most remarkable parts of Europe. Um, we've actually preserved the character of our countryside better than almost any other country by town and country planning. I'm not a great planner, but in this respect I really am. It requires a lot of effort to, to get the wonderful pictures you had on the, on the screen just now. That was not casual. That's the result of planning. Uh, and the coalition did tear up that system. They really did. They said, basically, we think people should more or less let rip. Uh, and the, 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 as, as anybody watching this program in a village or a town that's been, been hit, so to speak, by these new 300, 400 unit housing estates uh, will know, um, this is not planning, this is chaos. Daniel. <laughs> um, I think the idea that the coalition is tearing up the countryside when housing construction during its tenure has been the lowest since the 1920s doesn't really fit. I mean, it's certainly true that they, they introduce these looser planning regulations, but this is to force communities to accept the sort of the bare minimum. I mean, the previous Labour government tried to do this with um, uh, regional spatial strategies, which this government abolished. This is, there's, there's no great pressure here. I, all you're asking is communities to come up with five years of um, of, of, of housing demand. It's, it's based on their population growth, but, which is very but, low. But, but, you the point I suppose Simon Jenkins is, 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 is the amount of land it's being given over to housing is tiny. It's nothing to do with housing. You, ah, you, right, you, okay. You, you can say it's to do with roads, you can say it's to do with um, uh, runways or trains. Um, the, 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 the development lobby has latched onto the housing crisis as a way of getting their hands on, 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 on countryside, okay. which, is, which is cheap and profitable. The, the, there's, I mean, in London, I mean, Stony Acker did a recent study, there's, a, there's room for 1.5 million more homes in London on vacant sites. And why do you suppose it's, it's, it's so gone, Daniel? Be be because it's more expensive to develop in towns. So, simple as that. It's, it's, so it's not profitable. It's not profitable, it's not. even though the prices are so high. Because I, it's I, so I, expensive I'm to build sure it would be very profitable. What you are asking is for young people, people who need to buy houses, to go and live essentially on kind of any of the brownfield sites. You know, they're ex sewage land. They're kind of surrounded by pylons. They're grim. They cost a fortune to build up their 
often a uh, Radzi power station is selling for a million pounds and it's being developed. Yeah. Go out to somewhere along, say, uh, Barking, Barking Riverside, yeah. great state. You know, it costs a fortune. They're selling these kind of pokey little houses, £300,000 each, because so much money has to be spent decontaminating this land. So much money has to be spent protecting it because it's a floodplain, well, you're, moving you're, water volumes. It's actually brownfield land. You, you heard America now. You know what happens when you hollow out cities in this way. I'm, I'm we, not we, saying we're, 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 the worst, we're the worst country in Europe. For, yeah. for renewing our old city. We it's have absolutely dreadful. I mean, I've been, I've been to every one of them. British cities are packed with, with empty spaces right now. Not London. London. Not London. London is too. London is too. You don't know London. London. I do know London. 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 There's, a, there's a room for a million houses in London. All I'm where? Say, all I'm where, saying, where are these houses going to go? Where you just described it. With Bansy Power Station. Who's going to pay you, for it? You say Bansy Power Station. Bansy Power Station. That's what? That, that, that was derelict there. A few hundred homes that's going to go to. That was derelict there. I mean, that, how, how many Bansy Power Stations are there? Name another place. Where are One of the things, and this, maybe this is just a bit sacrosanct. I always say people live in Bansy Power Station. It's the green belt, right, isn't it? You want it sort of listed, really, and protected. As it's almost is in the planning, but don't, a lot of it's wrong. Don't, 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 it's don't get me wrong. I mean, I, 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 will, I want the countryside to be listed, like mm -hmm. towns are. We've got a very good system of town planning now. Uh, historic buildings, conservation areas, they're carefully graded and protected, and people accept that. I think they should do the same with the countryside. Now, if you if you listed the countryside, my countryside, I tell you one thing, you get, you get, you get fa no, you get far more land released for development. Mm. The problem at the moment is there's no difference between um, really superb scenic countryside, which doesn't happen to be in a, in a national park, and, 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 and a grotty field in the green belt. Well, Simon's absolutely right. Back there. Da, 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 Daniel, is this a is this a generational thing? Is this a sort of young versus old issue? Well, to an extent, it has to be because you know seventy percent of people over sixty five own their houses. I, mean, the, I can't remember the exact portion for people of my generation, but it's certainly a lot less than, than half. Um, and it's been falling with every passing generation, and particularly fast since recession here, because people can't afford the houses that are being built, whether they're on brownfield land, whether they're um, city centre flats. They're, they're, so they can only afford to rent them, and they can't afford to, to build the price, to the, pay the prices that would make the land London. profitable they can, and higher now. They can in the north, but the jobs aren't there. Well, 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 they need to move south. Take the so jobs to the north. We're not <laughs> going to solve that today, <laughs> yeah. I don't think. Gentlemen, yeah. thanks both very much. Yeah.